National Public Radio takes no responsibility for the following program. They closed the banks, took all my money, but the bank in my heart is still full. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I ain't got a dollar. You won't hear me holler. Got no job, got no place to sleep, but I've got a song. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Library of Congress Sound Archive. Mo Moskowitz, 20th century writer, actor, musician, and entrepreneur. A new production of Swan Lake opened off-Broadway recently. It's a production which takes a new approach to a very old theme. From New York, Andy Lyman reports. In a tiny theater in Lower Manhattan, 12 actors, musicians, and dancers are gathered for a production of Swan Lake that has been both stop praised show, and criticized. Show, stop the show and hold everything. Good morning, Bob. Stop good morning, tape. Andy. And good morning, listeners. Good morning, Mo. This is Mo Moskowitz, America's favorite entrepreneur, and I've stopped by the NPR studios this morning. I'm in the middle of the story, Mo. Oh, I loved it. It was a brilliant story, Andy. But listen, between you and me, you know, this is just not the right morning for a story like this. I thought it sounded kind of interesting. Oh, that's because you're too close to it. Trust me. Now, listen, Bob, I've got a story that America is dying to hear. Got a story on taxes. Taxes? Taxes? Oh, is there an echo in this room? Or something? I got a new book on taxes here that's going to save your listeners thousands of dollars. But I wanted to do this story, Mo. I understand where you're coming from, Andy. Listen, take $10. Look, go outside. Get yourself a good sandwich. Look, take your mind off it. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Now, okay, taxes. Bob, what do you think? I think I'd rather hear the story on Swan Lake. Well, this story is sort of like Swan Lake. You know, Swan Lake, taxes. Listen, I'm here today, Bob, to show you my new book on taxes. I want you to look at this title. Fear of Filing by Dr. Mo Moskowitz. Oh, that's right. Dr. Mo Moskowitz, astrological tax consultant. It's... It's a breakthrough, Bob. Listen, when's your birthday? My birthday is May 16th. Aha! Sagittarius the Crab. Okay, let me check the documents here, Bob. I brought all this stuff over here. Boy, look. I got the Ginny May right over here. Look, I got the IRA. I got the magic number Lucky Star Scroll. Wait, wait, wait. I, listen, Bob, we're going to have to take a little trip over to my office. In the Moskowitz Mobile. Taxman! 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 Well, we're here. That was a short trip. Well, it's radio. All you gotta do is get from the left speaker to the right. <laughs> that joke would be a lot funny if the show were in stereo. But I want to tell you... Let's get to the subject of taxes. I took my taxes down to Dr. Moore. Just follow me upstairs, Bob. I've got all the answers to your questions about taxes right here at my financial data control center. It says go-go agency on the door. Well, you know, it's a temporary office, Bob. I'm sharing it right now. Listen, I want to show you my special tax plan. You're going to love this. Here, look at this. Earn big money. Mm -hmm. Declare yourself a foreign country. It's, it's, it's a breakthrough, Bob. You don't have to pay anything. I declared myself a foreign country. Yeah, listen to my national anthem. God bless. I'm applying for foreign aid. That sounds reasonable. Oh, listen, I've written you an anthem, too. Well, you see, you don't get the last note of the song until you actually buy the book. <laughs> sort of a precaution, but the idea is foolproof. Suppose they ask you in for an audit. Ah! Don't even use that word, Bob. Say, a uh, clarification. Okay, a clarification. Well, now you're talking serious tax business, Bob. And I've got an expert coming up to the office any minute. Any second now, Bob, he's going to be here. He's going to answer all your questions. You better get that.
Hello? Yeah, I'd like to talk to that idiot that's on the radio every morning. Uh, Mo, it's for you. <laughs> Put him on hold. In the meantime, Bob, check out Chapter 5 of the book, Happiness is Just a Thing Called Mo. It says here you've got to write off some of your income, Bob. You've got to invest it in some surefire losing proposition. You know, some idea dreamed up by a total idiot. You mean something like you would think of? Well, it doesn't have to be that good. But listen, I got a record I want you to invest in smash hit. You know, the success of Terry Gilliam's neo Orwellian film, Brazil? Well, I've got my own tribute to that great coffee growing neighbor of ours down south. A little number I call No Sex, Please. We're decaffeinated. No sex, please. Remember, we're decaffeinated. It's tough for us to get elated. We just don't have the energy. They say you get from this cafe. No love, please. I thought this piece was about taxes, Mo. I've got an expert coming, Bob. Any second he's going to get here. Oh, that must be him. Come in. Uh, I'm done with my sandwich, Mo. Are you ready to do the Swan Lake piece now? Not yet. Not yet. Listen, go out and get some coffee. Go out and get some coffee. I'll talk to you later. Who let this orchestra up here? I'm sorry. Things are crazy today, Bob. Hello? Hello, Dr. Meltzer. I mean, Dr. Moskowitz. It's about my son. All he does is spend and spend. Now, listen, I'm sorry, Dad. I can't really talk to you right and now. And spend. Ah, they're closing in on me, Bob. I gotta run fast. And spend. But just who was this Mo Moskowitz? And where did he come from? Mr. Kaplow, what sort of childhood did Mo have? Uh, excuse me, did Bob have? He, uh, somehow or other was different than the uh, rest of the children on the block. He was very, very introspective. Until he was bar mitzvah. <laughs> then all hell broke loose. The best evidence suggests that Mo began his show business career as the producer manager of theatrical Wunderkind Basil Starling, heard here in these rare archival recordings from NPR's Fresh Air. Good evening. This is Basil Starling. Basil Starling, genius of the American theater. Super a super genius of the American theater presents a salute to the Academy Awards. Tonight, Dangerous Liaisons, based on the novel by Should... By Should... Based on a novel. Good evening, everybody. I'm Carlton Carlton, and I bring you exciting news indeed, because tonight, Lady Lavinia, that's Lady... Lavinia. Lady Lavinia welcomes the great hope of the American stage as the director and star of... Dangerous Liaisons. He writes his own scripts, directs them, and makes them live and breathe with the warmth of his genius. Super genius. His super genius. Ladies and gentlemen, Basil Starling. Thank you so much, Mr. Carlton. Members of the audience, as always, I am obediently yours. Tonight I'm pleased to bring a story before you, a story whose star glimmers most brightly in the firmament of literature. Ladies and gentlemen, Dangerous Liaisons. That's the name of our story. Dangerous Liaisons. Keep an eye on that handsome. Who are you calling handsome? You know, just as you can't adapt a full-length novel into three and a half minutes, so too you can't rush proper dental care. Thanks, Terry. And you know, the latest word in clean teeth is Lady Lavinia's oral sandblaster. <laughs> yes, for that skeletal smile of bleached white bone, think Lady Lavinia. That's Lady... Lavinia. <laughs> and now back to the Basil Starling production of Dangerous Liaisons. Why have you taken me away from the party, Viscount? It is beyond my control. Monsieur, you led me to believe... It is beyond my control. ...that you loved me. Why are you walking to the window? Look at me. It is beyond my control. Hey, you up there, shut up! People trying to get some sleep! This is outrageous, sir! We're recording a radio drama! I'm Basil Starling! And I'm Jerry Gutkin! Jerry Gutkin, the musical comedy star? 
Why, yes. Well, maybe you'd like to join me in a little song. Pull out those dangerous, those dangerous liaisons. Yes, it's a movie that's created quite a stir. Hmm. Oh, we would certainly enjoy all those liaisons if we only knew what liaisons were. First there was Malkovich and he was scoping Glenn Close. She didn't dig him, he wasn't pain man. But by that time we were back out in the lobby to see if maybe we could sneak in to see Rain Man. Mr. Sterling, I'm sorry, we seem to be running out of time. Well, Terry, uh, what did you think of my acting? It's a once-in-a-lifetime performance. Really? That's why you won't be on next week. Now, we all know that for modern students, reading is a thing of the past. And therefore, I somewhat reluctantly present these... Musical Musical Cliff Cliff Notes! Notes! Yes, musical Cliff Notes. Name any book, Terry. Any easy reading text traditionally associated with high school readers. Any book, huh? Any book at all. Okay, how about Moby Dick? There's a cat who only had one wish. Name of Ahab and he dug this fish. He tried to catch it, but you know he's batting zero. We call this cat... The Tragic Hero. I offer my musical talents to teach any element of education in any musical style. Throw me the challenge, Terry. I'd like you to teach complex mathematics in the style of um, Steely Dan. Excellent. And I'd like you to sing along. Doing long division. Doing long division. Long division. Take the sine of the tangent and the tangent of the sine. Take the sine of the tangent and you multiply by nine. Look it up in the table till you're able to divide. How the sine of the tangent's just the tangent to the sine. Doing long division. Long division. Throughout these early years, Mo continued to learn his craft, although exactly what that craft was remained somewhat mysterious. Portions of our program are brought to you by Jiffy Shrink, America's favorite quick-fix psychotherapy center. Jiffy Shrink, 20 minutes from couch to car. Mary was falling apart. I didn't know what to do. I figured the marriage was down the toilet. Then I heard about Jiffy Shrink. My whole life changed for the better with Jiffy Shrink. I finally uncovered the memory that my brownie troop was really a satanic cult. You know, it took me almost three minutes of therapy before I could face that. But now when I'm upset, I just repeat my mantra. ram lama ding dong ram lama ding dong Whoa, oh, 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 I've got a mantra. ram 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 lama ding dong Got it from Jiffy Shrink. ram 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 lama ding dong But soon Moe's incandescent sense of self forced him to take the spotlight. And in those early days of his radio career, there was no stopping him. What are those old records? Ah, what was that? You know, years ago, I was trying to write a radio adventure show for kids. Nobody wants to hear these old... NPR presents The Adventures of Radio Man. Can we, can we play this, Mo? I, I guess if you're going to force me to... Hey, look, you got to sit here to get the full stereo effect. In our last exciting episode, Radio Man and his faithful sidekick had just run into a huge steel-plated bank vault. Jeepers, Radio Man, we're trapped! Oh no, a million gallons of water! We'll never get out now! A sealed bank vault is no problem for Radio Man, because you see I've brought along my sound effects record of a huge door opening. Come on, run through and turn down the reverb! We're safe now, Radio Man. Thank goodness. An empty meadow. Not so empty, Radio Man. Uh, That voice, where's it coming from? I think it's coming from the left speaker. Yes, it's me, your arch nemesis, Feedback Man. I've waited years for this end. Please, madam, would you turn your radio down? For years you've thwarted my plans, Radio Man. And for... Please, madam, I'm begging you, turn down your radio. Transcribed from Hollywood, it's the Mo Moskowitz Program. Let's see. Head writer's conference room. I wonder if Mo's monologue is finished yet. 
He comes out. He comes out. He comes out. He's got the music going. He's got the lights. He's all ready to go. He comes out. And he comes out. He comes out. And he turns to the audience and he says uh, something funny. Right. He comes out. He looks to the audience and we need a killer line here. Killer line. Killer line. So he comes out. He comes out. He comes out. He comes out. He got everything going. He looks at the audience. He steps up to the microphone and says the killer line. Right. The killer line. Give me another die, Joe, will you? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I just... More bad news, Mo. No, what now? The musicians are on strike. Two minutes, Mr. Moskowitz. Two minutes. Oh, two minutes, and now I've got a musician strike. Oh, if only the phone would ring, and it would be NPR's Susan Stamberg with the answer to all my problems. Yeah? Hi, I'm Susan Stamberg. Oh, isn't radio wonderful, folks? <laughs> Mo, I've got the answer to all your problems. Yeah, Susan. Instead of musicians... Mm-hmm. Why not hire 200 Curly Howard impersonators and have them sing a cappella? Okay, you Curlies, you all ready? I'm dreaming of getting love in a psychedelic setting. Buy a lava lamp, I'm calling you. In a Nehru shirt, I'm missing you. <laughs> During those early radio years, Mo recorded an unexpected hit among the coffee house crowd. I ate gefilte fish for breakfast, gefilte fish for lunch, gefilte fish for supper. Gefilte fish for brunch. I ate gefilte fish in the morning. Gefilte fish at noon. And if I keep eating nothing else, I'm going to be a gefilte fish soon. And if he keeps eating nothing else, he's going to be a gefilte fish soon. I got gefilte fish in my coffee. Gefilte fish stacked against the wall. I got a gefilte fish in my aquarium. There's a giant one lying in the hall. I got one nailed on the ceiling. I'm getting 30 more real soon. And if I keep eating nothing else, I'm gonna be a gefilte fish soon. And if he keeps eating nothing else, he's gonna be a gefilte fish soon. Gefilte fish. Gefilte fish. Gefilte fish. Gefilte fish. Gefilte fish. <laughs> oh, what a crazy fruit! Moe next turned his particular genius towards children's programming. Featured here are highlights from his animated special, Alex and Friends, nominated for a Gramney Award. Uh, don't you mean a Grammy Award? Uh, no, Gramney Award. It's sort of a local thing. With only half the votes counted, it appears that the ruling party has lost control of the upper house of parliament in Mel Tormeia. Final election figures stop, will be announced stop, in just a few stop, hours. Stop, stop, Hold it right there, Alex. You're not seriously going to do a story on Mel Tormania, are you? At this hour? Look, Alex, this is morning edition. 95% of your audience is naked. <coughs> Sorry, madam. The other 5% is sound asleep. We've reached the boredom threshold here. Does the term jaw-lockingly dull have any meaning? That's why I'm back, Alex. Mr. Mo Moskowitz, America's favorite entrepreneur, back with a million-dollar idea to liven this show up a little bit, get the young people listening. Alex, what do you think the young people want to hear this morning? Ooh, I don't know, uh, maybe some sort of news story with a Generation X slant? Exactly! They want to watch cartoons, and that's why you got to look at this script. It's got Generation X written all over it, <laughs> whatever that means. Yeah, look at this. Alex and Friends, Public Radio's first completely animated news show? Oh, all your favorite NPR personalities, but now they're animated as cute little animals. They're all singing on stage together, wearing little skimmers, holding little canes. Here, listen to your theme song. Alex and Friends, with your host, Alex Chipmunk. Okay, Alex, we're ready. Alex! Alex!
works. Okay, I'm Alex Chipmunk and... Uh, Mo, do I really have to talk like this? Well, are you interested in making a million dollars? Yo, kids, this is Alex Chipmunk with all the coolest news. And let's start with a shout out to our coolest correspondent, that super skunk, Scotty Simon. Scotty the skunk at your service. Thank, thank, thank. Listen to this. Dateline, Sarajevo. And look, it's all the latest headlines in the pouch of Carl the Kangaroo. We're singing a cappella to tell you about a fella who's making his marsupial debut. His news is always thorough. He sounds like Edward Murrow. He's Carl the Friendly Cartoon Kangaroo. Sorry I'm late there, Alex, but I had these 75 news tapes to record and, well, I finally got them in perfect... Whoa! Who let this cat in here? That's no cat. That's Scotty the Skunk. Skunk? I knew I should have stayed at NBC. You know, Mo, I'm thinking that maybe an NPR cartoon show is just, uh, a bit too much. Too much? Alex, this show's gonna cost nothing! And just think of all the merchandising! Now, where did I put my script? Hey, here's your script, Mr. Moskowitz! Catch! Thanks! NPR's never gonna have to fundraise again. Listen to this. Alex and Friends is made possible by Big Hat, the satellite dish you wear on your head, and by Schmecken Uber Lieberstrauss Heinen Versla Gesselschaft, the biggest name in microprocessors. Your business is our business at Schmecken. Oh, forget it. I'm not reading that again. Just send the money back. Hi, this is NPR's Robert Siegel. You know, public radio listeners enjoy buying educational toys for their children, but in truth, most children really are only interested in blowing things up. And that's why NPR Toys introduces the littlest arsonist fun kit, including hot potato hand grenade and hasta la vista Mother Earth. Study everything there is to know about our planet and then blow it up. Cosmic debris sold separately. And Alex, I've been saving the best for last. Because I know what you're asking yourself. How are we going to use NPR's Cokie Roberts on this cartoon show? No problem. She'll be doing the same hard-hitting reportage that we know and love. But now she'll sing and dance, too. And we're calling her Ukulele Cokie. You put your right-wingers in, you throw your left-wingers out, put some centrist in, and you wield a little clout. For a tape or a transcript, write to www.hokeypokeykokey.com. And talk about cutting edge! Alex, this cartoon show's going to be interactive. Am I on the air? Yes, you are. What do you think of Howard Stern? Howard Stern is number one! Howard Stern is number one! Well, you get the idea. And we end with Alex Chipmunk complaining that everything's gone wrong with the show. He's totally exasperated. And then the camera pulls back to reveal Alex actually being drawn on the animation stand. I demand to know who's responsible for this. Show yourself. I demand to know who is responsible. And meanwhile, the camera's been pulling back to reveal the sinister figure who's actually been drawing this entire cartoon. Uh, what's up, Doc? It's me, Dan Shore. <laughs> and that's all, folks. <laughs> Stay tuned for Danny and Friends next. It's me, Dan Shore. Danny and his friends. Hello, Dan. I love your cartoon, but what do you think of Howard Stern? Baba Booey! Baba Booey! <laughs> First you think that things are fine, but then you see the danger sign. Call upon your friend and mine. Call on Super Pork You. Yeah. Mine. Call on Super Pork You. <laughs> Quiet down, White Fang. Elvis, what's with the dog? I'm anchoring a local newscast, and my producer, Soupy Sales, let me this dog as a co-host. Good evening. I'm Elvis, and uh, what's happening tonight, White Fang? <laughs> oh, you got a joke for us. <laughs> All right, uh, and uh, who's there? <laughs> uh, Razor Gorbachev who? <laughs> you killed me, White Fang. You killed me. <laughs> 
And at no extra cost, you get Little Miss Growing Up, the doll that grows up right before your eyes. Just pull the string. <laughs> I want a pony. I can't ask him. Will you ask him? Let's make a baby. These kids are driving me crazy! You forgot the half and half. Sometimes I feel so old. Your attention, elves, for a special message from your plant supervisor. All right, you elves, you've got exactly three and a half minutes to lunch. It's a rush, but we're on deadline, and I'm sure all elves interested in continuing their employment here at Santa's workshop will have no difficulty in sacrificing some small amount of personal time in the interest of productivity. Please log back on your computers the moment you return to work. Those electing to eat, please stay by your machines. The snack truck will be coming by with complimentary soft drinks and extra strength Advil. Three and a half minutes to eat. We're never gonna make it this year. This job has given me a nervous breakdown. You can eat lunch, Tierney. Are you kidding? Pass me the Advil. Oh, what a life. My grandfather worked here. You know what he made? Raggedy Ann's! Hey, my father made wooden sleds. My father made wooden shoes. I tell you, their lives were like some Warner Brothers cartoon mm. elves. You know, sitting there smiling, <laughs> singing, tapping little tacks into leather insoles. You know what I'm making this morning? What? 90 megahertz, one gigabyte Pentium motherboards. I don't even know what they are! Hey, I'm working so fast, I don't know what I'm making. My, my head is spinning. You know what I was assembling all morning? What? Prozac Barbie with mood hair. You pull the string and she says, I hate the holidays. I get so depressed. Maybe I have seasonal light disorder. Oh, the elf next to me is making estrogen replacement Barbie. Oh, with the hormone patch. Yeah, I'm getting that for my kid. You think you got it bad. The gnomes have got till midnight to make 100,000 New Age cowboys and Indians. Oh, wait a minute. I thought we weren't making toy guns anymore. Oh, there are no guns in New Age cowboys and Indians. Now the cowboys woke up to the Indians and say... Look, we are so sorry we stole your land. If there's anything we can do, any kind of reparations we can make... What are you working on, Tanny? Oh, the CD-ROM version of the three little pigs, huh? you get to choose a new ending. Now the littlest pig gets chronic fatigue syndrome, checks into an animal support group, and finally gets straightened out with lithium and lightly steamed bean curd. She's at the foreman! She never comes down here unless there's trouble! She's got a clipboard! I knew I should have gone to the Christmas party! Good afternoon, boys. I wonder if you're lonesome tonight. <laughs> just kidding. Uh -huh. Listen, I just want to say that you guys are doing a wonderful job. And believe me, Santa knows how hard you're working. Santa feels your pain. That's why he knows you'll work double shifts tonight to help him out with his new line of toys. And I got the prototype right here. What is it? It's part of his contract with America series of toys. Uh, check this one out. He calls it the Newt Gingrich action figure. Uh-huh. Look, you push the button, it tells stories to your kid. Listen. Hiya, kids. Today's story is A Christmas Carol. Once upon a time, there was a sly little boy who exploited the entire London welfare system to his own advantage. And this boy's name was Tiny Tim. <laughs> but there was another man who believed in privatization of banking, no capital gains tax, and a line item veto. And this man's name was Scrooge. And he was rich. Yay! <gasps> oh, Tannenbaum. Oh, Tannenbaum. Everybody, my, my attorney's Murray Tannenbaum. M-O-N. <laughs> Ask about our giant line of carpet cleaning products. A-O-W. W? Because we love you. I-T. It's just a rough idea, you understand, kid. The Broadway Years. Mo pounds 42nd Street, carrying two suitcases and shouting, Gotta dance, in the doorway of every producer he sees. He is successfully treated with antidepressants, but not before he pens these selections for an off-Broadway review he calls Brecht in Silicon Valley. Brecht! What? Gets a transistor! Brecht! What? Gets a resistor! Brecht! What do you want? Get me home! I know nothing about electronics. My brother Neville and I are going to close this fundraising concert with a little duet, which we call Sending the Cash. Isn't it rich? Isn't it queer? 
head. Who you calling a queer? Good luck on your grits in the lyrics, man. Don't give me yeah. a problem. From Moe's doo-wop musical, How to Stuff a Wild Fallout Shelter. Oh, 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 I asked the angels for a girl who would love me. And I asked the angels for a girl who would care. I asked them to send me down. From Moe's Drag Western, They Died With Their Braziers On, freely adapted from the Brothers Karamazov. Well, you remember last year I brought you that girl group, Working Women, right? Remember that big hit, I'd Love You If I Had The Time? <laughs> very hip record, but very inside, if you know what I mean. Listen, I've written them a new smash. Got it right here in the book, The Palimony Song. Mo Moskowitz and the Punsters, The Hard Rocking Years. Selections from their self released flexi disc, Rage Against the Mezzanine. Start to get bored Change the chord Change the chord Then you put a real pretty part in it Make it sound like you put all your heart in it Can you feel it, friend? 
coming around the bend. It's the hold it back and just build the suspense a little. Three notes higher and build the suspense a little. Three notes higher and build the suspense a little. Hit chorus, hit chorus. You gotta have a big hit chorus. Hit chorus, hit chorus. Just another ready made patented big hit chorus. Hit chorus, it's a win that a podium play and add. It was 154. Got to stretch this song just a little bit more. Oh. Hit chorus, hit chorus. When in doubt, stretch it out with another chorus. Hit chorus. Here's the false ending. Do it yourself, big hit record. about what are we about well maybe i'll tell you tell me once upon a time there were the posters who constantly went critical acclaim you could read the car frightfully insightful not to mention quite delightful Get it. We're the punsters. Oh, you guys do punk. We're the punsters. Check out the skinny guy. We're the punsters. How much does he weigh? Once upon a time, there were punsters who tour the world in search of wealth and fame. You could read the column. England said satirical. Venice got no lyrical. But still, the reaction was exciting. The same. We're the punsters. Someone get rid of that zombie. We're the punsters. Do whipping post. These guys will never play here again. We're the punsters. You can't hear the vocals. I don't get it. No, I'm afraid. I just don't get it. And that, my friend, is the history. Boardwalk Santas want to break me down. It's 3 a.m. and under the street lamps. The champs, the tramps, in their come on smiles. And the lit up trees in the closed up bars. And hey, Santa, where are you going? This wind is tearing through me, Santa. I gotta get out of this town. It's killing me, chilling me. Santa, the damn boardwalk's filling me with loneliness. These high school girls in their winter coats and their jacked up jeans and lipstick smiles. Santa, where are you going? Santa, can you lend me five dollars? Jesus, I gotta find my way home. Santa! 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 Then he 
Moe's first film, You Know My Name, Look Up My Kulats, receives the People's Choice Award for Best Supporting Hosiery. Take me to the movies. Take me to the movies. Take me tonight. Want to see a movie where the words are is going to revolutionize the cinema. It's going to be another Battleship Potemkin, another 10 days that shook the world. Look at that title. It happened at the Garwood Shopping Mall. Sounds good. Oh, just listen. Hey, where are you going with that bar of Neutrogena soap? Back to the place I found romance. Oh, yeah? Where's that? Don't forget our youth sale on beach thongs. I lost my heart at the Medi Mart. I'm running this picture as a double feature with a great horror movie I produced with George Romero. Sort of like Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, except this one's for kids. It's rated G. Listen. We're hungry. We ate the T-shirt. Still hungry. Attention all students for an important announcement. Now I know one of the kindergarten classes has gone berserk and is feeding off the flesh of its victims, but that is no reason to throw food in the cafeteria. Thank you. The teacher. That sort of brings tears to my eyes, Mo. <laughs> me too. I think I better turn down the treble. Take me to the movies. Take me to the movies. Take me tonight. Tonight on Superstation Channel 9, get out your handkerchiefs, because here they come. The Rabbis of Cherbourg. Sir Richard Attenborough presents the story of one man who changed an entire world. Ben Kingsley, Freeman Gosden, and Charles Carell in America's favorite, Amos and Gandhi. Now, wait a minute here, 
Mr. Mo Hatma, you gotta remember, we's all brothers in the Mystic Knights of the Sea. Having gone their separate ways earlier in the 80s for legal reasons, Moe and the Punsters eventually reformed as the Rivets, billing themselves as America's favorite hardcore punk band. You'll never walk again. The Rivets sing Rogers and Hammerstein. This was a real nice clam bake. Hi! You heard of a candy gram, right? Well, now Mo Moskowitz presents the Rivet Gram. They come to your door at midnight and sing selections from Fiddler on the Roof. Listen. Hello, who is it? Hey! Do you love me? Do we want? Hey! Do you love me? Do we love you? Doris, it's for you. One, two, three, four! Get on my star, get on my car, drink my liquor from an old fruit jar. Do anything that'll keep in grace. Uh-uh, honey, get off of my face. Hey, 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 hey. Little 16 rivets, what do you get? Rivet, 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 rivet. You get us in time. Get off of my case. Get off of my space. Get off of my face. I wear a thin tie. Hey! 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 Play it. Tempo to rivets. Oh, you don't have to play it at all. Play it. Tempo to rivets. Oh, you don't have to play it at all. Play it. Tempo to rivets. Oh, you don't have to play it at all. Play it. Tempo to rivets. Oh, you don't have to play it at all. Say what? The public radio years. Failing in every conceivable venue of commercial entertainment, Moe and the Punsters eventually find a comfortable home at National Public Radio, eventually winning a Peabody Award. Uh, don't you mean a Peabody? Oh, never mind. Hi, this is Jim Morrison of The Doors. Jimmy Hendrix. Bobby Dan. Elvis. Kate Moe. You know, it's not so easy being dead, especially when you don't have much money. And you know, that's the same problem we have here at National Public Radio. So won't you send in your contribution today so National Public Radio doesn't end up like me, Jim Morrison. Jimmy Hendrix. Bobby Dan. Elvis. Kate Moe. You're, You're listening, listening to National Public, Public Radio, Radio, where dead rock stars live. Stronger than death. Hi, Mo, it's Koki. Yo! Look, I think I got your summer angle. The movie's brought to you by the Clinton Star Lewinsky Bar, the frozen treat that's fun to eat. Try one, Alex. Mm, not bad. Uh, ugh, it's dripping all over my shoes. Well, it leaks. Uh, uh. Support for the NPR Beach Party comes from NPR member stations and Mr. Chernobyl, the only food irradiation machine that grills your steaks and shrinks your prostate. And, and the final part, this is the big one. This is the one that's going to make the money. We know about um, APR has uh, the Prairie Home Companion, right? Big money, right? we got to get on that. So we're talking about what can we possibly do? We talked about, well, a fairy home companion. That's bad, bad taste, right? All right, a hairy home companion. Maybe it's like a dog, you know, we lost our leash, that kind of a thing. <laughs> finally, finally we settled upon 
And um, of course, it's, you know, it's, I had nothing to do with it. It's uh, a Moskowitz home companion. <laughs> all right, and it's going to have that same kind of folksy, authentic, down-home feel. We're going to broadcast it live from a casino in Nevada every Saturday night, and it's going to open like this. Well, who's that knocking at my door? It's been a quiet week in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> Mrs. Corleone put up a new neon sign over the casino. Don't you know? Hello, Mo. Moskowitz Home Companion is brought to you by Mo Moskowitz Frozen Knishes. Heavens, they're frozen. Has your family you tried a Moskowitz? Has, Has your family, family tried a Moskowitz? Try our frozen knishes, they'll answer all your wishes. Has your family tried a Moskowitz? Moskowitz. Woo! Carlos Puntos runs a store he calls Moskowitz Mania. Yeah, I got all the more Moskowitz items. I got the more Moskowitz t-shirts, I got the more Moskowitz watches, I got the more Moskowitz yo-yos, I got the more Moskowitz frisbees, I even got the real more Moskowitz. Hey Mo, how you doing in there? Okay, Carlos, how are you? Remember us? We are Johnny Deposit Slip and the Check Kings, and we did a little thing called... Baby! Mm, you got to help me out. Yeah, we had the pleasure of recording that song for Mr. Sheldon Gutkin of Right Off Records. And now, all these years later, the Check Kings are back for NPR. Cause baby, you got to help us out. We need your money, ain't no doubt. And just to make sure your money doesn't get lost, don't send it to the station, but send it directly to me, Johnny Deposit Slip, and I'll personally see it gets here, cause... Baby! You've got to help me out. Mm, baby! Oh, you've got to help me out! Remember, send all checks to Johnny Deposit Slip, care of Krause's Supermarket, Bloomfield, New Jersey. I'm Susan Stamberg, and this portion of 2025 M Street is brought to you by... NPR's Whoa! Whoa, the liquid nitrogen aerosol spray for romancers who want to slow down. Ooh. Okay, honey, I'm ready. Uh, wait a minute. That's NPR's Whoa! Now with Oat Brand. Mm. We'll be back with more smash hits after this word from... Dentists Bess and May Mucho, introducing man-to-monkey cosmetic bonding. This week featuring baboon's teeth. Yes, baboon's teeth for the seven-inch smile of success. From... Bess and May. <coughs> Bess and May Mucho. And every new patient receives a copy of a brand new hit, the world's most Terrifying sounds. Listen. The better angels of America are waiting, waiting for a new leader to help them soar. That new leader is my friend and our next president, George W. Bush. And if you think that's scary, listen to this. Okay, now just the bar mitzvah boy. Put your right foot in, you put your right foot out. His nose was kind of big, that's true, when he joined the Beatles in 62. But he couldn't play drums on Love Me Do, that's Ringo. Ringo. Confident of his position at NPR, Mo goes on to organize open auditions for a new Morning Edition theme song. 
Okay, we've got hundreds of people to get through. Tell us briefly who you are, then give us a little sample of the type of music you play. We are Johnny Deposit Slip and the Check Kings, and we'd like to do a song we had the pleasure of recording for Mr. Elliot Greenspan on Demo Records, entitled The 17 Reasons Why I Love Morning Edition. There are 17 reasons why I love Morning Edition. 17 reasons why I love Morning Edition. 17 reasons, 17 reasons, 17 reasons. Now one is the opposite of lost. And lost is the way I feel when I can't listen to my favorite radio program, The Morning Edition. That's just one of the reasons that I love Morning Edition. 17 reasons, 17 reasons, 17 reasons. Oh, 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 now two. Enough. But we got 15 reasons to go. Next! Latin American singing sensation, Mr. Julio Reverb. This song goes out especially for the girls out there. I am just a Julio. No, please, more reverb, Glenn, please. I am just a Julio. And everywhere I go. No, more reverb. We need more reverb here. Plenty of reverb. I'm just a Julio. We simply don't have enough freedom. Next! Ba 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 the host. Ba 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 ba. Next! Brian and the Beachcombers for NPR. Well, the summer's here and I'm sitting in the classroom. Gotta tell the teacher that I'm still dreaming about the beach, the sun. Radio playing in my car. The girls, the summer. Thank you, Brian, but we really don't do commercials at NPR. The girls, the summer. Yeah, thanks. Next! Diet sun. Very good. Just one calorie. Next! Sonia and the Smirnoffs. Доброе утро. Мы бы хотели для вас представить сегодня трибуту для Сильвия Пачоли. Маленькая песня, которая называется Spike Jones Rumba. South Africa, Lady Smith, Monica Lewinsky. Thank you! You drop your bombs on Baghdad and you... Next! The Flea Stooges. <laughs> Next! There's a show! Thank you! That's not really what we're looking for. Oh, thank you! Really, I appreciate the opportunity to play. Yo, yo, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, featuring a selection from his album, Walk a Mile in My Pants, Gargantua Records presents the notorious Buster Pants. I rock the house with my funky sounds. I'm fly, I'm fat, 300 pounds. Oh, damn, he did it again. Hmm, I think I feel a breeze. Excuse me while I sit down. Ow. Wonderful. Next. Mr. Mo Moskowitz. Good morning, fellas. Look, you want jingles? I have got killer jingles. Listen to this. Morning edition. One of the great things about Insert local station call letters Is Morning Edition And this jingle package Available exclusively from Moskowitz Entertainment The Young Sound Can be used every single day of the year 180 days till school's out 180 more days Every single day of the year 179 days till school's out 179 more days 
morning edition. Well, somebody get this idiot off the stage. Uh, wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. Because I've slanted my jingle package for every possible market. First, I've got this one for way down south. Morning edition. The news magazine with faith in the way you listen. Are you nuts? Get this lunatic off! Wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet, because I've got this one for the Light FM crowd. Easy does it. Easy listening. Every time. From... Hello, Moskowitz! Love that What do you think? No justice, no pants. Hello? Am I on the air? Okay. Who was the American League pitcher with the greatest consecutive strikeout record in the 1967 series against left-handed batters? Sir, this is Morning Edition. This is a news magazine. We don't take trivia questions. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, this is the first time I ever listened. I, uh, I thought it was a baseball show. Sorry. MP3 file. Mo Moskowitz and the Punsters. Still circumcised after all these years. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here to help me sing this next song, a man who was recently awarded the title Mr. New Jersey. Mr. New Jersey, would you come out here, please? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Before we sing our next song, I'd like to recite a little poem for all you out there, and it goes something like this. Tom's River went to Seagirt to stick his long branch up a freehold to make his point pleasant and to break her cherry hill. Thank you very much. This is New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of practical poetry from his volume, The World's Tallest Water Sphere, and other poems. You can help me sing on this? Sure. A one, two, three, four. Boston, they know about who and whom. They learn their grammar in the lecture room. But it's hard to know the right pronoun to choose. So in Jersey, we just say use. Who's? Use. Ah, in Jersey, we just say use. Suck. In England, they'll call you a stinking loo. A rogue, a rake, and a blagger, too. In Spain, they'll call you El Hombre Fag. But in Jersey, we'd just say douchebag. Hey, who you calling a douchebag? In Jersey, we'd just say douchebag. Jive in Jersey. Jive in Jersey. Oh, yeah. say that it's really keen. In Philly, they'll tell you it's lean and mean. In Norfolk, they'll say, hey, all the way. But in Jersey, we just say, fucking A. Yeah. Fucking A. In Jersey, we just say, fucking A. Jive in Jersey. Jive. Just say fucking A, fucking A. In Jersey, we just say use douchebags. Oh, fucking A. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mo Moskowitz, the legend lives. For a transcript of Morning Edition, listen to the show with a pen in your hand and write very, very quickly. For a copy of Morning Edition, call 1-888-NPR-NEWS. Madam, please, for the last time, turn your...